All right, guys, here I'm going to show you how to make uh, stylized wood. A lot of you guys seem to have a problem with it, and I'll show you how to tackle it. So I'm going to go in and make a new layer. And you should already <clears throat> be familiar with Mudbox. If you watched my earlier videos, um, which was an intro to Mudbox, it actually is pretty helpful. We're mainly going to focus on the painting. We're not going to talk about the stencil. I will eventually make a video talking about the power of the stencil. It works really well. We're going to call this base. This is going to be our base color. And what we're going to do is go ahead and go to the paint tools, click on paint, <clears throat> and I'm going to try to grab a nice saturated color to work with. I think this actually works pretty well. I could even go a little more orange, but in this case I'll, I'll just keep it this color. Do done. And what I can do is I can flood that layer, or you can even flood based on camera. Now this is a new feature they have in Mobox where you can flood on layer. Again, just double click on your paint tool. If you chose the right color, then you'll be able to get this to come up. I'm going to say, and I'm using 2014 just to let you know. So I'm going to go in here and say uh, flood paint layer. This gives that same color all the way across the board on the whole piece, this whole object. The next thing we'll do is make a layers in here, and we'll call these the lines. Or even you can call it grain if you want to. Okay. Keep your resolution consistent. So whatever new layer you do, make sure it's consistent across the board. <clears throat> I'm just going to keep it 2048 so you can see my resolution as I work. So now make sure I have the right scale for my brush. That's hitting the B key. You can left mouse button. If your uh, Wacom pen is sent correctly, you can use the Wacom pen to do so also. So now, people, we're going to go in here and we're going to make the lines. Now, the lines, we're going to have to change the color of our brush this time. So we're going to go for something a little bit darker. So we can actually go for that darker color that you saw earlier in my swatch. Now, to be able to paint these lines, there's one thing. I could go in here and start painting. And, oh, control Z. Right, that, that tool is supposed to be off for this example to work. So I can go in here and uh, start painting. <clears throat> and when I start painting, you'll notice it's okay, right? It's it's all right. I'm making lines. They're they're all right. But you want to be able to use steady stroke. Using steady stroke is really helpful, especially when taking on kind of like the wood grain on an object. So I can go in here and keep tracks my line. Works really well. Um, I don't believe they have this tool in ZBrush. At least the last version that I owned, they do not. Let me do Control C. Got too close to each other. Do something like this. If I want, I'll just loop that a little bit. And your lines don't always have to go all the way across. I mean, we're talking cartoony, so they can have a little bit of that hand-drawn look to them. I'll do another one here. Goes down. This one could probably just come to a point or whatever, or loop, whatever you see it doing. It's your world. We're just paying rent that there. I can maybe even put another one here if I want. <clears throat> now making loops, I'm going to have to turn off my steady stroke and get this guy going here. Now I'm going to teleport ahead so you don't have to watch me do all these. So I'm going to let me see, I'm going to undo these guys real quick. Let's see if I do redo real quick here. Let me do Shift Z, see if my redos are going to come back in. And let's see if we can do redo. Redo. It may not come in. If not, that's fine. Ah, that's right. Too many. I had to uh, reinstall my drivers, so it got a little weird. So you can erase any of these anytime you make a mistake. I just wanted to show you really quickly as teleport into the feature. You can see my lines. I'll do this really fast. And do like a little knot hole. And thing. Okay. And uh, let's do the rest of them. Turn on my steady stroke again. Finish this up. There we go. 
This is not too bad. This actually looks better than my last one. I was going to try to pull up for you guys. Should have just saved a layer. Follow my own advice. Okay. And we'll do another one down here so things are a little bit more context. Love the steady strokes, really helpful. Allows you to stay on point. Oops. Accidentally selected masking. My bad for that. There we go. All right, so we got our wood kind of painted out. Probably could have a little bit more lines, but we're going to leave this for now. And um, we'll turn off the steady stroke real quick, and we'll put like a little knot on this guy if you want to. Now, when I'm painting, notice I'm using this particular brush. This is called the cliff face. It's actually I use a lot if I want to do hand-painted textures because you get a nice organic feel to some of your uh, brush strokes. Works pretty well. Let me change that one again. There we go. And uh, so what we're gonna do now that we've put in our grain of wood, and some of these you can just connect. I just made mine a little bit more broken up. This is gonna be a little bit helpful. What we're gonna do <clears throat> now? What I'm gonna do is duplicate my base, just like Photoshop. I can right click and I can go in here and say, "Hey yo, I'm totally gonna duplicate you." So duplicate selected. There we go. And what I do with that duplicate selected, I'll probably just duplicate it one more time, just in case I screw up. Now you saw me try to hit Control Z and save an earlier one. That was just me going too fast. I made a demo for you guys to show you, and I undid too many times. So I'm going to duplicate selected one more time. And this guy I'm going to hide. This original base I'll hide. These two are mainly what I'm going to work with. <clears throat> now this one, what I can do, because I always, I always try to keep twos or at least one more, this guy, I can go in here and start using my dodge and burn. Now there's a dodge right here we'll use. And what this will do is will give us a faded edge to the wood. We can also paint and make a new layer. This guy is going to be, um, we'll call this a dark grain. Or actually we'll call this, this will be highlighted grain. Highlighted, we're not doing the dark just yet. Okay, so we can paint a little extra, but we can also dodge and burn. So I'm going to keep that highlighted extra, this guy right now, we'll leave him, but let's mess with our base copy that we have to play with. I'm going to switch to dodge, and in dodge, this is the previous brush I had, and I have my steady stroke on still. So <clears throat> now I'm assuming you guys know a little bit more about Mudbox on this one. I am using 2014. And to get this color to cover the whole um, object, what I did was flood. You can actually flood in the layer. And you'll see it says flood from camera. We're not going to do that in this case. But you can, if you choose paintbrush, you can flood from layer. See that? Flood paint layer. That's what I did. So let's go back into Dodge and Burn. This allows you to flood from camera that doesn't have the luxury of layer, which kind of sucks. All right, so I got my steady stroke. So you'll notice I can highlight an edge. This is pretty cool. Let's make our, let me do Control Z for a second. Let's make our brush a little bit bigger, more dramatic effect. There we go. And I'm showing you Photoshop as well as Mobox because both are so easy to use and we can export this guy out if we wanted to into Photoshop and I showed you that in a previous video so look at that highlight we just made I'll do another highlight here steady stroke is helping me I do another highlight here now notice how much more character this is adding to our object adding these highlights now you gotta be careful notice I just went over that other edge so if you wanted to you could just continue going so you don't get any overlap Dodge and burn is easy to overlap if you're not careful. There we go, going all the way across the edge in 3D space. Going up on the edge here a little bit. Oh, looks like I got a little overlap. That's fine, we can fix that later. 
and a little bit here. It doesn't have to be perfect either, so you can end in mine a little bit earlier there. And then finally we'll do the one cross, and I'll start it right at the edge of that guy. So the overlap isn't too bad. Oh, my bad on that one. My camera's not completely flush, so I have to eyeball it. Pretty cool. There you go. And uh, again, we'll just leave that overlap for now. We can always dodge and burn that or make it dirty or whatever. Fake it. <laughs> so we'll go in here. And now I can do the same thing. But again, you have to be careful of overlapping. So that's just one way you can create highlights for your object. Another one is we can literally paint them into the object itself. So I'm going to go into painting here. And I'm showing you two different ways to do this again, just to help you out. And we're going to change our color palette. And we're going to go for something. No, no, no. We can go a little bit like uh, a little bit deeper red or orange if you want. Got to be careful because if you start doing orange, it can look a little weird because if it doesn't quite fit the texture or color of the object. So what we can do is let's t sample that color. And then that color that's sampled, we're going to lighten him up a little bit. Take him a little farther here. Not too orange. There we go. Lighten him up. Done. And this is the highlights. So now with steady stroke on, actually let me put steady stroke on a little bit stronger. And then let's make this a little bit, little bit brighter or a little bit richer in color. I think it asks for it. Go down here to steady stroke. There you go. Hey buddy. Turn that on. And then now I can go in here. There you go. And it's closer to our uh, earlier color. And if you're not sure, you're like, well, Sean, that's still not quite matching our faded areas. Well, it doesn't always have to match the faded areas, but if you did want it, Mudbox has it so that I can click on here, click on this, and do a sample. There you go. We get the exact same color, or at least close to it. And then now when we highlight, we can make the faded edges a little more consistent. Pretty much the point is you are in control. Can do that. Mess with this a little bit. This guy in here. Hard to get detail with steady stroke on. Sometimes you'll have to go in here and turn it off temporarily. Do some hand painting. And if you make it look a little bit chaotic, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose the feel and look for your uh, piece. And what I mean by chaotic, if you're not quite coloring in the lines, it's okay. No one's going to hold it against you. As long as you get that idea that this is a piece of wood. Notice I'm going right between the grains. And if you don't like your lines, like maybe your lines are too cartoony or they're just too sharp, you can blur them out if you need to. Oops, my bad for that one. You can blur them out if you need to. And there is a blur tool. There's a hand blur tool that we can use. I'm going to do this last one here. On here, over here, because our, our lines are pretty solid looking, don't have a lot of fade off, and that's the thing that's great about Photoshop, you'll get more of that Wacom reaction of pressure. Sometimes Mudbox doesn't always read it really well, sometimes you have to change to a certain kind of brush for it to be more effective, it's a little bit annoying. Look at that. So, I mean, I'm doing this kind of fast because I'm getting tired tonight. So let me try to finish it up here. And now we can go in here and use the blur tool if we want. So I can blur this up a little bit if I wanted to. It's a little strong. Let's go to our tool settings. Yikes! It's way strong. Sit. Roll over. All right. I'm gonna have to switch the mouse. My Wacom's fighting me. So we'll lower that dramatically. Um. You can also mirror it, but you know wood is not asymmetrical, so there's no need for that. You can sit on steady stroke too, so you can blur with steady stroke. If I don't say I know, then we can blur this out a little bit. I'm gonna turn it off though. Steady stroke sometimes takes too long when it's on with that tool. Let's make it a little bit stronger. 
Please don't fall asleep at the sound of my voice, but be inspired to do great art. There we go. So you can blur these out just a tad. You get more of that hand-painted look to it so it doesn't look so... You know, you see your pencil marks and so forth. We can actually make it look like the woods has a faded quality to it. Without seeing direct line width and stuff. There we go. And here, here, there's a little bit of the, you can see my stroke right here. Here, fix that up, fix that up, right there. Probably doing a little bit too much, but whatever. Maybe down here, we can take care of that. And we can apply the same effect with my lines, which are very, very strong, right? Yes, yeah, Sean. So we'll go in here and I will lower my blur little bit just a tad six or five and I'll go in here now and I can blur out my lines just up oh, that might be a little bit too strong control Z and let's set that to a solid 7.5 here we go and if you're not sure if you're afraid you're gonna mess it up I mean again like I said just like in Photoshop, I do this all the time. Duplicate your layer. Hide it. So if you mess up, you can go back to it. Or maybe you like some elements that are connected to the last one. Um, blur it out a little bit. Oops. Control Z. I locked it down on accident. Control Z again. I hate that my Wacom does that little selection thing. So let's go deselect the object for a second. There we go. Control Z. So let's make this go back to the blur tool. And we're going to make this guy, oh, I don't know, we'll do eight. I think eight was pretty good. I was a little too fussy, I guess. So now we can go in here and dial this down just a little bit, just a little bit of blur. And we can do it on the edges if we want. And remember, you can control the fall off. Now you got to be careful, mine's a little bit sudden on this side. So we can control a fall off just like you could when you sculpt, which is actually pretty freaking awesome. It's got a fall off. And we can change it, the strength of it, just like you would with a curve tool in Photoshop. Ah, I don't want that peaked out there. My bad for that. Don't want it bulbous either. Slightly, slightly plateau a little bit. And uh, you'll get a different effect from your blur tool. And this is more kind of what we're going for here. me clean it up there. So just right at the edges you can actually get rid of that effect going on. And you can choose fall off. So I can go in here and we can say hey I want a solid block fall off so when I erase it's super strong. Or you can say I want it very subtle a little bit what I had before. Um, you can even have more of a curve to it. And we can do the whole thing so you can just sit there all day long. So we can go in here and create our up. Oh. Control Z, let's try that again. Increase our brush size. So I can go in here, mess with the strength a little bit. We can lower it to like four, and I can blur this just a little bit. See that? We're just blurring the whole thing. And you can get more of a, a kind of an effect, cartoony effect there on it. And again, you can duplicate that layer or turn on the other one that was there before. And then we can switch his mode to like multiply, make it stronger with the lines, or we can overlay. So overlay it so it has a little bit more of a the blur mixed with the solid line. And then we can control our opacity with it. So that if we want a lot of blur or a little bit of blur, we're in control of the whole thing, which is pretty freaking cool. And that can clean up any your if your lines are too strong. Alright, that's about it with that. Um and again, this is so nice to be able to work with this stuff and to create it. And then if you want, you can even make these stencils in Photoshop like I showed you before. And you can bring them in as a stencil. And remember, stencils, um, I haven't got to cover it in my video, but I'll, I'll cover it really quickly here. Stencils allow you to paint. And when you paint, you get a stencil that shows up. And then you have to click on projection to be able to project that on an object. And when you paint, it'll show up on that object. See that right there? Cool. And the reason why it looks weird like it's masked because it's the blend type that we've chosen, which is overlay. Hit Q to hide it, 
and you saw that Mobox gives you instructions for using the S key to rotate it and scale and so forth. That's it for this one.